I want to introduce the idea of electric potential, and I'm gonna do it drawing in things that you're comfortable with as much as I can, but first is a big summary. This is how we'll start it out. Big summary of these things. Big summary of what? I mean, I guess electric field, electric force, and um, I don't know, electric potential, V, and also electric potential energy. All of these things for electrostatics. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to put them all in a nice picture for you and show you some symmetry between the equations. So. The, we'll start over here because these are the things that you've already learned. Electric field is electric force divided by charge. That's the definition of electric field. And you could put a Q naught right here, but really it's the force felt by any charge divided by how big that charge is. That defines for you what the field strength is. So if the force is big and the charge is small, then you know you've got a really big field. Right? A small charge would feel a big force only in a really, really big electric field. So that's the definition of electric field. And then <clears throat> there's also another one that you know that the this is what a force is. I'm, maybe you have thought about this and maybe not, but a force is a spatial derivative, du dx, of energy. So a force causes energy to decrease. And you know that force is a vector, so there must be something more interesting than just um, a derivative in one direction. It's probably, uh, oh gosh, it probably is something shaped like this. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty cool. So there's, there's gonna be some vector nature here, but we don't have to worry about that right now. In an introductory physics course, they might not take you that far because this requires calculus two or three or something. So a force, change is a change in energy. And that's the same statement as work, which is an energy, work being the integral of force over distance. That's this equation multiplied dx on both sides and integrated on both sides because the integral of du is just u, the potential energy, and that's work, the change in potential energy. Then I'm gonna be multiplying by dx over here and integrating, and that's the definition of work. So this equation is okay with you, and this equation is simply a definition. Let me give you three bars right there. Now I want to begin to introduce the idea of electric potential. It is a capital V, and it is the change in electric potential energy divided by charge. In just the same way as electric field is force divided by charge, electric potential is change in potential energy divided by charge. Now, we already said that force is change in potential energy by distance, the spatial derivative of potential energy. We can also argue that electric field is the spatial derivative of electric potential. Okay, so freeze this frame, write these things down, and we'll come back to each of these and see them in their own different ways, but I think there's a beautiful symmetry that helps you to summarize each of these things. <clears throat> Notice that these are both scalars. This guy is a vector, and it comes from a scalar, so we must be doing something very interesting to this, this uh, electric potential in order to get a vector field out of it. The electric field and the scalar electric potential are related in a really, really interesting calculus way. I want to start with the fact that, um, well, work changes potential energy, right? But if potential energy is positive, if the change in potential energy is positive, then the work done must be negative. So I can say, let's say for conservative force, You know a lot of conservative forces already. What do you know? Friction? Ah, not conservative. But a conservative force like, uh, like gravity, you're going to get really cool things for the work done by the force of gravity. Here's the work done by a conservative force. It is that force dotted into the distance that the thing has gone. So my argument is that a, the work done by an electric field is negative the charge times the electric field times D. This would be if I put a point charge into an electric field, then the work done by the field would be positive if it went the way that it wanted to go. And I guess the work 
done by the field would be negative if it went the way it didn't want to go. So let's summarize this really carefully. If moves way it wants to go, let's be formal, if it moves the way it wants to go, the work is greater than zero. So the change in potential energy is negative if something moves the way it wants to go because the work is the opposite of the change in potential energy. All right, so let's, uh, let's just put this in absolute value so we don't have to worry about those kinds of tricky bits. And let's say you've got this charge and you've got this electric field and you've got this distance. That's electric potential energy. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go on and say that this work, I mean, it just has to be the integral of the force dotted into the distance that the thing has gone. And again, I'm not going to be concerned with direction at this time. And you know that electric force, here I am deriving the statement that I just made, electric force is charge times electric field, right? And if it's just charge times electric field, then I have to dot that into dx. And if the thing is going the way the electric field is pointing, then these are parallel, and we don't need any sines or cosines. I guess in that case we'd have a, a cosine, but we don't need it. So we can actually just pull the electric field out of here, and we've got electric field times the integral. Whoa! We've got charge times electric field times the integral of 1 dx. And you know what the integral of 1 dx is, right? It's just how far you've gone. So this becomes then Q times E times how far you've gone. And this is actually Latin for what's up now. So it's a very important and useful phrase to remember. Work is QED. Work is change in gravitational potential energy. Now there's a minus sign, but don't concern yourself with that. Because you know if something moves the way it wants to go, then the field has done positive work on it. Also, if something moves the way that it wants to go, then its change in gravity, it, sorry, its change in electric potential energy is negative. We can just say its change in any potential energy is negative. Something moves the way it wants to go, it has lost potential energy. Cool. We need to make another analogy, and that is just like the electric field is equal to force divided by charge. The change in potential, the change in electric potential is delta U divided by charge. So I guess what I'm saying is <clears throat> if the potential energy of a situa situation has changed a lot, but the charge is small, then that means we've gone through a very big voltage. And <clears throat> voltage is electric potential. It implies moving a charge from one spot to another. All right, so we're going to say this, and we have to define the units of, uh, gosh, the units of a volt. This volt, one volt, is one joule per coulomb. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's got units of energy here, and here we've got units of charge. It's one joule per coulomb. That's what a volt is. And another thing that's really useful is to establish, um, oh gosh, useful, but devastatingly confusing. <clears throat> At any rate, another thing that is useful is to define a quantity called an electron volt. And an electron volt is the energy that an electron has if it's allowed to accelerate through a potential of one volt. Let's make that a little bit concrete. I'll give you a parallel plate capacitor here. And uh, let's see, we've got to make one side positive and one side negative. Let's have it go the other way for a change. Put you some positive charges right here, put you some negative charges right here, hopefully the same amount so that everything stays nice and balanced, and we get an electric field that points to the left. And if I have an electron inside of there, that electron, well, let me see, I'll put it right in the middle. Which way does that electron want to go? Yeah, of course it sees these positives over here. So electrons don't want to go in the direction of the field. But if this potential is one volt, it, that means if I, hook, if I hook up a voltmeter to here and to here, and it says V is one volt. If it's one volt and I set the electron right over here and I let it go free, 
whoosh, it will go faster and faster and faster until it hits the positive plate. The kinetic energy that the electron has right when it reaches that side is the energy that we call an electron volt because it's an electron as it goes through one volt. So let's write all that stuff out. Kinetic energy of electron after acceleration through one volt electric potential. And consequently, since it's gained kinetic energy, it must have lost potential energy. So going from here to here causes it to lose potential and gain kinetic and conserve energy that whole time so we can actually calculate how much an electron volt is. So you know that change in energy, where, would, where do we have that nice change in energy e equation? We said that work is equal to, well, we said work was negative change in energy. And we also said that work was just Q times E times D. Hmm, interesting. And we'll just assign its negative or positive nature when we get uh, to finding whether it's the direction it wants to go or not. Oh, let's just do it right now. It's going the way it wants to go. We let go of it. And it went like that. And so the work done by the field is positive, And so it's lost electric potential energy, but I let the electron go and it goes over there. And we know that the electric field, oh, what is the electric field in this circumstance right here? Well, the cool thing is that this simplifies because V, the voltage, the potential between two plates in a uniform field In a uniform field, this electric potential is simply negative ed. It's negative E times D. And so we can say that this, oh man, work then is just charge times V. And I guess there's a negative sign right there because the voltage is high here and low here, but we've also got a negative charge. Oh my goodness. When all of that is finished, we can find that the work done in this circumstance of one electron going from that side to that side is simply the charge on an electron times the voltage, which in this case is one volt. The electric potential is just one volt. And we're going to say 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. And I'm gonna have to call it Coulomb volts, right? Woo! a Coulomb volt, but hang on a second, one volt, one volt is the same, yikes, that really didn't work. One volt is the same thing as one volt equals one joule per Coulomb. So a Coulomb volt is simply a joule. And this energy is an incredibly small energy, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So if you had a very small slice of apple, you could lift it by one meter with that amount of energy. But um, it would have to be one billionth of a billionth of a, um, wow, a billionth of a billionth of a tenth of an apple. Good luck. I don't really care for the way I ended that previous video. I just come in here and tell you that V is negative ed. That's not cool. Let's do it another way. And we can justify that a little bit better. I want to say first that we know work is Q times E times how far the thing has gone. And remember, that's just uh, force times distance. So this right here, charge times electric field, that's just force. And this is just how far the thing has gone. So that's very reasonable. And uh, we're sort of saying the same thing. Well, yeah, let's see if we can get there. I want to say that change in electric potential as I move from one spot to another is the change in energy divided by charge, but that's the same, same thing as saying it's the negative work divided by charge. So I'll put another minus sign out front here, continuing on what I'm saying, and it's the electric charge times the electric field, I'm plugging in this right here, times delta S, <clears throat> divided by Q naught, and lo and behold, the Qs cancel. Isn't that pleasant? So the charge that gave us the force cancels there, and the charge that we're dividing by to get the potential cancels it right there, and we find that this is negative electric field times how far you've gone in the direction of the electric field, and that is something that we can just call D.
So we could say, or V is negative Ed. That's a little nugget to put in your head in case you need to have some equations memorized. That will be very useful. But notice, we had ourselves an equation. Oh, so we could now say that electric field, now barring any minus signs, no, I'll give you a minus sign, we'll be honest about this, E is the change in electric potential divided by the change in position. And uh, that means we have some new units for electric field. Electric field was newtons per coulomb already, but electric field is also volts, that's the units of electric potential, divided by distance, which we measured in meters. So it's volts per meter. And you can see that these are exactly the same based on the definition of a volt. I think we said that a volt was a joule per coulomb, so let's just plug this in. <clears throat> We've got a, um, a joule per coulomb meter, that's what a volt is, and a joule is a newton meter per coulomb meter, meters cancel out and we get newtons per coulomb. What fun. All right, and the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna say this thing right here kind of smacks of a derivative. Let's be honest with one another. This is the derivative of potential with location. And we could then uh, do something that mathematicians aren't very happy about at all. I'm gonna multiply by this and then integrate and I'll find that the integral of electric field dx is equal to, what am I saying? The electric, oh man, the, the integral of the electric field dx is equal to the integral of the electric potential. And so, I guess these have to be in the same direction for this to be happy. This is simply the change in electric potential and this is the integral of the electric field. So what you're doing is you're integrating electric field to find how potential changes. You can't understand potential until you do a bunch of problems. So you should really do a bunch of problems. But the cool thing is, if we can assume that the electric field is constant, that would be in the case of a uniform field then we can pull E out of this integral and it's only then that we can say V is negative ed. And I need to put a minus sign on here because I forgot it. Let's put it over on that side. Good. Then we find that the change in electric potential is negative E times D if the electric field's constant. Otherwise, we're gonna have to go back to here. So a point charge, for instance, has a very complicated electric field because it is not a constant electric field. It has a very complicated potential, too, as a result. So let's go to um, electric potential energy. We can just define it really quickly and then wrap this enormously long video up. If I, uh, what do I wanna say? I wanna say potential energy, here we go. I wanna talk about potential energy one final time. Potential energy is then just charge times voltage. That's a very useful equation. So, that is about it. You remember that me I is me F. So energy is conserved. If it's losing potential, then it's gaining kinetic as long as it's in a conservative field. And so positive charges seek what kind of potential? I guess they're looking for low potential. And negative charges seek high potential. Quiz to finish it off, if I give you a capacitor, it's a parallel plate capacitor right here, and I slap some charges on here. I'm gonna put some positives over here and some negatives over here. What do I want, six of them? One, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got myself an electric field inside of here, but I'm, I want, <clears throat> here's what I wanna know. Which one of these has a higher potential? And some people like to say, which has the higher voltage? And we can move into that language starting with this next video. But which one of these is a higher potential? Good luck.